Well, you know, you report earnings and you, you never know exactly how the street is going to respond. But I can say that we feel really good about the business and uh, the business continues to grow really nicely. And if you think about our business, the business is a usage based pricing model. So customers uh, pay for what they use on our platform, which customers love. It means there's no waste and it means our success is tied to our customers using our product. And that usage based model has fueled our really high dollar based net expansion rate of 131% last quarter, which is really industry best. And and has also fueled our extended growth. And, and we've, uh, we've committed to 30% growth, annual growth over the next three years. And I don't see a lot of companies out there doing that. So uh, that indicates that we feel really good about the business and, and where we're going. I think it was the wider than expected loss that, that you put out there. And also the surprise announcement of your COO resigning, someone who has been there during the hyper growth days of Twilio. Yep, you know, I've been building this company for 14 years and, uh, you know, leaders come and leaders go and, you know, that's how it works. And so, uh, you know, we did announce changes, but when you're growing as quickly as, as Twilio is, uh, you know, there's always changes that happen. And, uh, you know, George has been here for five years and uh, really helped uh, uh, build the company and scale us up. But we've got a great leadership team that we've trained uh, that is a great succession plan. And so really excited for where we're going. Jeff, uh, a big part of Facebook, of course, is, is messaging. Uh, no doubt you saw all the news uh, today. I should have called it Meta. What's your views towards the, the metaverse as, as it relates to communication and, and human interaction? Is it, is it possible that, in fact, just simple messages might long term prove to be better? You know, I think it's one of those things where over the short term, we probably overestimate uh, how, how something like a metaverse might affect our lives. But, you know, maybe over the long term, it's hard to predict uh, how technology shapes our lives. But, uh, you know, I think if you look at most science fiction, uh, a lot of those outcomes don't don't tend to look good uh, in at least the science fiction realm. But in reality, uh, you know, you never know how this technology can actually impact our lives. Uh, but, uh, you know, time will tell. Is, is it an area you're, you're going to be deeply pushing into? Well, you know, we, we've done some collaborations with other companies in the past who are doing things like augmented reality and virtual reality. And look, I think it's just still really early days of that technology where, you know, you've got early uh, early hobbyists and people who are big fans of virtual reality and augmented reality. And sometimes those early hobbyists are really onto something and they figure out the future. Like think about all the personal computing hobbyists of the 70s, of which Steve Jobs and, and Steve Wozniak were members. But other times uh, those hobbyists... Um, they just stay hobbies and they stay curiosities. And the thing is, uh, will the average person want to be involved in like more of a, a virtual life? Um, I think time will tell. But there's obviously been multiple experiments through the years, whether it's Second Life or other things, that while they were interesting uh, for a time, they didn't stand the test of time. So anyway, we'll see. We learn from every one <laughs> of these like as technologies. You are not sold. You are not as bullish on the metaverse as, as Mark Zuckerberg, Jeff. I wanted to ask about maybe, your user maybe. growth. But we'll see. Do you New customers, we will. New customers growing 20% to 250K. Talk about what you, you see happening there, because there was this big concern that COVID pulled forward a lot of demand and new customer acquisition just as everything went digital and, and all these companies went online. We well, you know it's interesting. Like I mentioned before, we have this usage-based pricing model, and so our business is not selling seats, and our business is actually fueling the digital ambitions of companies as they are entering the digital world, as they have to excel and build new experiences for their customers, and ultimately compete and win in this digital economy. And so our growth really mirrors the growth of digital as an important part of our lives, an important part of every company as they are making that transition. And as you can see, COVID has accelerated companies' entry into this new world, but it's not a left turn or you know stuff that we only did because of COVID. Actually, many of the innovations that you saw over the past year were actually naturally part of how the world was moving. It just happened faster than many of us expected. You know, I always think about the the, the digital, the telehealth uh, solutions, and how very few uh, doctors' appointments were done over video prior to the pandemic, but now suddenly we all realize that like, hey, for a whole lot of our doctor's appointment, it is so much more efficient for us to see a doctor over video. And I think that uh, many of us will see a lot of our doctor's appointments via video that we that wouldn't have happened otherwise. Maybe it would have taken a decade and now it's here much faster. And when I talk to companies, they are saying like, look, we are investing even more in our digital roadmaps uh, because uh, a, customers now have these experiences, like we're not going to take them back, whether it's the advances in e-commerce, whether it is uh, things that can be done over video uh, in a collaborative sense or, te or telemedicine or, or distance learning and things like that. I mean, these experiences are now a part of our lives in an even bigger way than before. 
And so users are accustomed to it and now competitive dynamics because if a company and all of their competitors went and accelerated their digital roadmaps, well, now it's even more important than ever. And that's why we've been building uh, the customer engagement platform that we launched last week at our conference, which is designed to help every company execute as well as the digital giants to understand their customers and then engage with them uh, in this digital era. And I think that every company is essentially uh, needs to go build a great direct customer relationship in order to win in this digital era. And what they need is the technology that the best digital companies have to learn from every click, every scroll, every purchase, every return, every open, and figure out how do I personalize that experience? How do I make the web page, the mobile app, the emails I send, the text messages, how to make every point of engagement really targeted and great for customers?